Virgo singles welcome. It's your end of January time frame reading. I would say this is a timeless reading though for whenever you see it, uh, when it resonates for you. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Virgos. But this is a singles reading called The Four Pillars, really. And I think of it as meeting your soulmate, okay? And it's an always positive reading because I'm simply asking Spirit to help me describe the one that's right for you. Uh, we'll include some astrology here uh, for you. <clears throat> we think Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, but for your person, I'll be specific as we go along. We're looking at the emotional aspects with these two cards, uh, intellectual aspects here. I see the moon here, the sun. Uh, spoiler alert, cap, cap, <laughs> double cap. My ex-wife, 25 years, uh, it's not so bad. Uh, so here we have the uh, Venus and Mars energy, love and sexual nature. And I like to see here the core values and try to see what the lifestyle is like. So these... Uh, Four pillars of a relationship here. Um, right off the bat, you know, with the King of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles, this is such strong Capricorn energy. And this person, uh, they would be an Aries rising if this is the case. They could have a sun conjunct the moon in Capricorn in the 10th house somehow. I right? uh, Something like that. I mean, you got the Eight of Pentacles here. I mean, that's a Cap card to me. That's a worker. You know, it's either Cap or Virgo. Eight of Pentacles are super positive. It's doing the good work. Uh, you know, this person comes from a really solid family. That's a story they're going to tell you. They're really solid. You know, just a Capricorn mood. I got to say, I had the Queen of Pentacles in the previous reading, and I think that was a Capricorn mood. So, um, extremely self contained, this person. Um, this could be an issue. Keep that in mind. But for you, I think it could be okay with Virgo. Uh, they're not going to change around. And they're just, this is a, they, they're, they, this is your person. I'd say they were perfect. If they have a flaw, it'd be a workaholism. They'd be very driven in terms of their career. You know, Capricorns, they're going to climb the mountaintop. Uh, and that's what this person's going to do with the sun and the moon uh, conjunct here. Uh, in uh, Capricorn. Uh, I think they have an Aquarius Mercury. I'd look for that too. Um, so this person's like super sharp. Um, they should come with a warning. It's like don't even bother trying to fool this person, trying to scam this person. So I guarantee you they'll never tell you, oh, let me tell you about the time I was taken for a ride by these scammers because it's just not going to happen. And um, they probably were in an environment where it was a hard working. I think they may have had a lot of siblings. Um, they had a, a, you know, very solid mother and father uh, background. But, I, you know, childhood wasn't bad. Uh, but they might have, you know, maybe the family owned a business that they had to work at very hard. Maybe the children helped at it. They might tell that story, something like that. Um, uh, this is a person who's... Uh, commits to anything that they do here, uh, but they never commit with this Three of Swords, very critical thinking. And with the uh, Mercury and Aquarius, like, I don't know, maybe it's my favorite Mercury, mine's in Sag. It's almost useless for anything except for maybe tarot readings, astrology. <laughs> but this person can cut through bullshit. Oh my God. Uh, this is what I'm saying. You know, it's like, uh, this be the kind of person that you might bring up something and they would know about it and very evenly and, and deliberately and quietly uh, shred you with facts. <laughs> so uh, it, keep that in mind. Uh, it could have something to do with what they do for a living, but uh, this is their Venus energy here. And I think they have a Sagittarius Venus. And I think they have a Pisces Mars. So we got a uh, cap moon and cap sun. Uh, very likely conjunct within 10 degrees, these moon and sun. Mercury and Aquarius. You've got Sagittarius Venus and uh, Pisces Mars. So, you know, you could say that's where they're soft, but, you know, it's next to this Three of Swords. Uh, they, 
uh, are not incapable of compassion. I that's why, and I think too with the Sagittarius Venus, um, they're extremely open-minded. Uh, you don't Sagittarius Venus. I don't know people have silly beliefs in astrology. Maybe they're always going to cheat on you. Well, no more so than an Aries Venus. Uh, but what they will value is um, originality, your originality. They'll value you. They'll appreciate you. It's a very kind of intelligent Venus. It's a natural born uh, sapiophile energy. So, I mean, this person, I guarantee you, they would never probably even date. I hate to use the word stupid, but honestly, they, they just would have no patience for uh, people who or obtuse or, or not sharp, <laughs> you know, um, and so to them, you know, it would be very important in terms of love and relationship that they're engaged with someone who can engage them back and who's uh, intellectually really intelligent. So uh, then with the Pisces Mars, that's a very sensitive position, it's a difficult position for Mars. So, you know, when you have that kind of energy, you know, what I think would happen here with all this Capricorn energy, uh, they would, Mars is how you take action, is your willpower. So the way they would use their will, and you see here with the Seven of Wands, it's a bit combative too, I gotta say, with the Sagittarius. So in the combativeness to the Sagittarius Venus would be just like, don't even think about tying me down. Don't, 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 and it's more than just even relationships. Don't label me. You know, don't call me a whatever you're calling me. I'm a, I'm Mark, I'm Brenda, and that's who I am. Uh, a little bit of that kind of energy. Um, but I think they'd be very inclined to listen to this person. So um, you probably would find them sitting and listening to you a lot. Uh, very patient, have a feeling about them. Uh, you, you might get the feeling that when you're with them, that you're really listened to and that they understand you. And of course, Mars comes in. Like, and they might just kind of know exactly what to say. The combination of the Mercury here in Aquarius and the Mars and Pisces. Uh, somehow they've learned, you know, because they're a learner. They're really capable. This person can learn anything. It's what is, a Mercury in, in Aquarius is, is good for that. If you had a Mercury in Aquarius, you could basically learn whatever you need to learn. And we could figure out whatever you need to figure out. But I think this person works maybe in the healing field. They could be a psychologist, psychiatrist, uh, counselor, social worker, uh, this type of thing. Somebody that is seen uh, even at a young age as being uh, responsible because they're just so Capricorn. They're just, they're, you know, another thing they will probably tell you is I was never a child. They'll say, I was, I don't ever remember being a child. I've always been, I was a little adult, you know. And so they are kind of serious and they tend to adult. And um, they, I could see them like running an institution. You know, I dated a woman that was uh, for 28 years uh, ran an institution for the state, you know, having to do with the mental illness um, as a profoundly rewarding work, and I think important, and you know, I'd, I'd gotten into that position in this Capricornian way by rising to the uh, ranks um, and learning everything about it. And because uh, with the Six of Pentacles, I think like whatever they do, I mean, you're very fair about it. They're, and uh, by fair, I mean you know, they would be very conscious, and it wouldn't be like something they might even talk about. It's just going to be. They're going to give as much time to you and their family as they're going to give to their work. And they're going to treat the person A the same way as they're going to treat person B. And I think they might somehow be recognized for this. That they are, and this is a Capricorn trait, I believe. They are authentic to the core, okay? Uh, they are honorable uh, to the core. They have integrity. Another thing. Capricorn represents to me integrity. And you think about the way an engineer uses that. They say this bridge, it has structural integrity. It does not have structural integrity. And there's an aspect of that. But it's also moral integrity. And I think that's where that comes into play. 
Uh, I guarantee you, this person, if you anyone that knows this person, works with this person, one of the things that they're going to say, there is never any doubts about this person's moral integrity. And I think that's something that they have just uh, have uh, shown over time. So let me know what you think of this, uh, Virgos. Actually, I love this person for you. I think they're like perfect for you. This is a predictive read. Should be someone's not uh, around you right now. Sorry. Uh, but someone that would be moving into your life uh, soon at the end of January, maybe early February time frame. Give it a minute. It's uh, Tarot reading from the other side. So let me know if this person shows up next week or next few days. And get back on here and give me a yell. Leave a comment. Do hit a like. Appreciate the help. If you haven't subscribed, please do, guys. Thank you.